Okay, so now we've covered uh, cohort studies, uh, both retrospective and prospective. Now we're going to go on to case control studies. So, a case control study is an observational, analytic, epidemiological investigation in which subjects are selected on the basis of whether they do cases or do not controls have a particular disease under study. So, if we compare and contrast case control and cohort studies, case control studies, the subjects are chosen on the basis of whether or not they have the disease or health related state, whereas cohort studies are chosen on the basis of whether they are exposed or not to a putative cause. So, similar, like cohort studies, uh, uh, case control studies can be retrospective. So, in other words, disease events have already occurred when the study design begins, or prospective, disease events uh, have not yet occurred when the study begins. Usually, case control studies are retrospective, retrospective and as I said uh, uh, earlier, usually cohort studies are prospective. I stress usually, not always. So, again, diagrammatically, in a retrospective case control, you start the study, then look back in time to identify cases, and prospectively, it's the other way around. You start the study, then, then pick up cases as you go, as they, as they uh, become diagnosed. So, the advantage of case control studies is that they are good for diseases with long latent periods. So, in, in comparison with cohort studies, a long latent period means that the study will have to long, go on for a long time and then it will become very expensive. So in case control studies that's not the same problem because you remember you're picking up cases and then look back in time to look for the exposure. They're good for uh, rare conditions, they're also good for investigating multiple etiological factors and how they might interrelate. Uh, and lastly they're generally simpler and cheaper than cohort studies. So in some cases, they are, um, they are better than cohort studies. However, they have serious disadvantages, and mainly it's around bias. There's both in terms of selection bias, bias in, in the selection of cases and controls, or both. And also, like cohort studies, they, are, they have problems with recall bias. Bias in terms of the recall of the exposure in the cases, in the controls, or in both. And lastly, time sequence can be difficult to judge. Remember. Uh, a few moments ago I said in a case control study you look for cases and then look back in time for exposure um, but sometimes it can be difficult to judge um, where, whether the exposure came before the case. A, a factor that's often uh, misunderstood in case control studies is the control group. In randomised control trials you remember that a control group should be as similar as possible to the intervention group um, except for the intervention, so that when you see the impact of an intervention, you can be confident that it is the intervention that causes the difference between the test group and the control group, rather than any difference between the groups. So, for case controls, should, should it be that the control should be as similar to the case group as possible, except for the disease? Well, the answer is no. If you match on exposure, you will bias the findings and probably miss associations. In case control studies, an ideal control group is, uh, well, a control group should be as as representative as possible in terms of exposure as the population from which the cases are drawn. So, the key point here is should be as representative as possible in terms of the exposure. And I'll give you an example. Hopefully, we'll explain this in a few moments. So, by way of describing a case control study, I'm actually going to um, outline Dolan Hill's case control study looking at smoke, the, the link between smoking and lung cancer undertaken in 1952. You'll notice earlier I talked about a cohort study which they did with doctors, which was in 1954, but this was their first study in 1952. So the hypothesis they were looking at was that carcinoma of the lung was associated with cigarette smoking, and this was partly from their clinical ob observation, or Dole's, Sir Richard Dole's clinical observations, but also partly from other studies that had been undertaken, particularly in Germany. And what they did was they set up a multi-center retrospective case control study. So they were looking backwards both at cases and also the exposure. The cases were hospital patients with lung cancer, and the controls were patients in the same hospital with diseases other than lung cancer. Okay. 
They then collected the data by interview uh, using a questionnaire and they asked questions about current and past cigarette smoking. And then they calculated uh, an odds ratio. You can't calculate a relative risk in a case control study because you can't calculate the incidence because you're looking backwards over time and you don't, you, you, you're also not certain about the tem temporality of the exposure to, um, to the disease. So you calculate, as I say, something called the odds ratio. They only looked at whether um, the, the person was either, was currently exposed to cigarettes or not. They didn't look at the length of exposure, nor did they look at the number of cigarettes smoked. So it was a very, very simple case control study. Remember, they knew very little at this point. It was all a, a, a hypothesis. And these are, their, these are the data from that study. So if you look at the cases, they had 1,357 cases of lung cancer, um, 1,350 of which smoked, and seven were non-smokers. And they, had 1200, uh, they also had 1,357 controls, okay? 1,296 were smokers, 61 were non-smokers, okay? As I've said, you can't calculate relative risk because you're una unable to establish incidence, but you can calculate the ratio of the odds of getting the disease. Okay, so um, the odds of getting um, uh, the disease uh, is A divided by C, and the odds of not getting disease being a control is B divided by D. And if you rearrange this, equ uh, this equation, you get AD divided by BC. So, what I'm going to ask you to do now as a task is calculate the odds ratio. After you've calculated the odds ratio, I'd like you to interpret these results. And then lastly, what I'd like to do is if you work for the tobacco industry, what might you say about the results? In other words, how might you interpret them?